on this trip, I'm bringing mostly dried food and all you have to do is just add boiling water to it. It just makes preparation so much easier as long as I can get my stove working. Um, so this is a breakfast that I'm having. It's kind of like an oatmeal type of thing and it's freaking delicious. I've never had anything quite like it. It's just awesome. So I have a couple of these things in the morning to get my day going before I head out there and start hauling ass. Delish. My camera's all iced up and the battery's about to die. Yeah, I'm feeling like uh, I'm doing well, like maybe I'm a little ahead of schedule. Um, the polar bear fence, I'm telling you guys, it, it really makes me sleep safer at night, knowing that if something comes into that perimeter, there's going to be a loud bang, probably scare the polar bear off, but at the very least, warn me, warn Buck, so we can, you know, grab the pepper spray, grab the bangers, you know, uh, get ready with our jiu-jitsu moves, etc., etc. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to pack up and get the hell out of here ASAP. Okay, bye. Good boy. Such a cramped area inside my tent to pack everything up that I figured such a beautiful day again. Why not just leave it in there, whip the tent off, and then pack that up? I don't have to worry about losing stuff in a blizzard, so that's what I'm doing. Sometimes uh, these poles won't come undone because when the tent, the stove melts some water and then they freeze. So if you just hold your hand over top of the connection area like that, they'll just come right open. No problem. Yeah, let's see that one's frozen pretty good. And then hold just for a second. Sometimes when it's really cold out though, it can be a challenge because your hands start freezing, touching the metal. And I put my bear fence with my tent poles because it's all part of setup. I like to keep things that are all part of the same kind of uh, system in one place. Like inside my stove, I keep the funnel, the starter's paste, the lighter. For example, here's my stove. Two funnels, this one goes in the top there. This is fire paste. You'll, you won't get your stove lit in the Arctic unless you light some of that on the burners first. Lighter, uh, I like to bring a double burner stove and actually that's what the Inuit travel with, a double burner stove and a canvas tent um, because <clears throat> It sits flat on the snow. It also kicks out more heat. If you don't have a double burner Coleman stove, you need to kind of bring a board and then strap your stove or level your stove out on top of that. With a smaller stove, if the snow shifts because the tent warms, your pot could fall right off and that would be terrible. It might soak your, I don't know, your sleeping bag all over your ground pad, etc., etc. But the double burner has a big grill over top of it. So even as the snow shifts, as it melts into the snow, if you 
bump it, whatever, the pot's not gonna come off. So I think it's the better choice for a couple of reasons. Now, if I was traveling without a dog, uh, I probably wouldn't bring it just because it is a lot heavier and I'd, I'd rig up another model just using a piece of plywood, maybe a bungee cord to secure a couple other smaller stoves would be lighter weight. But uh, if you don't mind hauling a little extra weight in the winter time, double burner's the way to go. You see, there's where the stove was, how it melted down into the snow. Now this puppy is a little annoying to have to blow up every day, but man, is it ever worth it. Not gonna get a warmer, more comfortable sleep. Not that uh, tight for space in my large palk, which is really nice not to have to cram everything in there perfectly every time. Just uh burning off a little garbage only paper but uh, it's got food residue on it bring everything in these large uh, army style stuff sacks they're pretty good you can fly with them too you can just check this I like to make sure I melt the ends of all my ropes together. As you just uh, burn it and then smooth it out with the base of the lighter. You can also spit on your fingers and and shape it and that way you don't burn your hand but you get the shape that you want much better thread after it's melted do things like a loop and a trucker's hitch that I'm tying right now there we go Okay, I guess it's time to load up and move on out. Here we come. Uh, it's important to know the best way to lock down your pulks. Make sure all these are pretty tight. This one I'm just using rope, uh, and there's a special kind of knot I use. It's a quick release, and it won't loosen as I travel through the day. Come back to this one, pull that. I just loop it under this one. I pull that and that helps keep the whole thing tight. And I loop around once and then around the main loop like that. I use a quick release knot there so I can just pull it. And this going once around there helps prevent it from slipping, helps prevent friction and the rope breaking. If I want for good measure, I go around once more like that too. 
That's easy to get on. That's the way to do it. Back. What's this? What's this? What's this? Sometimes Buck needs a little coaxing. Boy. Good boy. Good boy. Well, this trail I'm following right now is the trail from the other group that got a skidoo lift right to the head of North Pangnertung Fjord and they just started only traversing the pass which is what people that do the pass almost always do they don't uh, walk all the way from Kikatarjuk like I am their skidoo taxi left a decent trail probably to uh, the head of the bay Come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. Come on. Ready to bang off 15K today, Buck? Hey, buddy. Come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. Come on. Good boy. Come on, Buck, what's this? What's this? Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. That's a boy. That's a very good boy. I just crossed some uh, polar bear tracks. I've been seeing a lot of rabbit prints up in the hills and it looks like it walked right across the fjord over to that big iceberg there. So that's a little bit concerning but it snowed the night before last night and these tracks have snow in them which means they're over 24 hours old so likely it's moved on from this area specifically. It's hopefully, hopefully headed uh, out of the fjord and uh, you know further out onto the sea ice they're looking for seals though and there's seals all around here even in the fjord because the seals stay under the ice but they have little breathing holes and there's enough of them that if they keep coming up to consistently breathe there's enough seals that the movement of the water will keep it from freezing so you know, hopefully there's not enough food in here for them and they got to head out further onto the sea ice but uh, a little concerning it is playing around on the hills. Look at those are just all the polar bear prints there. And looking for rabbits. You see those small little prints there? Those are all rabbit prints. So that's a polar bear actively hunting where I am right now. Anyways, just gonna keep my bear defense stuff at the ready. It's all I can do.
So uh, it looks like those polar bear tracks were not headed out of the fjord. Uh, they must have crossed to that iceberg and then come along the shore and then cut back to the other side. So I'm actually crossing them again here. Uh, they look like they were made before the last uh, snowfall two nights ago. So it's the same age as the other ones. Uh, so, you know, considering I haven't crossed any others, it, there's a good chance it means that the bears are somewhere in the fjord right now, which means I'm walking towards them. Now they might have circled back and walked along the shore, or they might have gone up into the mountains and crossed over into Maktak Fjord, which is that way. But they're obviously out here just looking for food, looking for seal holes, you know, rabbits, whatever, um, Jim, Buck, you know, whatever they can get their, their paws on. Uh, so that's a little concerning, but uh, you know, what am I supposed to do? Literally crossing a polar bear's trail right here. They're probably staring at me, getting ready to eat me. I'm a little down on the food chain out here. Come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. Buck has found a seal breathing hole. Now it's completely frozen over. I saw a couple fox tracks going by it. It's the first seal breathing hole Buck has ever found and he's super excited about it. I just walked past it. I've talked to some Inuit hunters that say, you know, that's why they love bringing their dogs out because they find seal holes and stuff like that. Well, here's Buck, a husky from Northern Ontario, never trained, and he's amazing at it. Look at him go. He's gonna come up with a seal. Buck, is there a seal in there? You smell a seal? If he does smell a seal, it's long gone. Buck, did you find a seal? Did you find a seal breathing hole? Yes, you did. That's a seal you smell. Time to get going here. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll find another seal another time, and you can bark at it. Oh, he's gonna mark his territory. Yeah, it's Buck's seal breathing hole, everyone. Buck owns it, he's just stuck his flag in the ground like an explorer. Okay, come on, Buck. Buck, come on. Buck, this is a lost cause, buddy. You're not finding anything. Do you smell a seal? Is there a seal in there? What do you smell? Do you smell a seal? That's exciting. Okay, come on, Buck. Come on. We have to leave this area. Yeah, that's your pee. That's your own piss. Yeah, you, you mark the territory. Okay, come on. Come on, Buck. That's it. Party's over. Come on. Buck! Buck, come on! Buck! Come on, Buck! Good boy, get some snow on the way. A little drink on the way. Come on! Saw two figures in the distance. See if they're polar bears. 
Doesn't look like they're moving though. I've been trucking along here and I saw what looked like two figures in the distance. So I pulled up my camera to use it as binoculars basically to zoom in to see if they're polar bears. It looks like they are not from the looks of it, which is nice um, because I'm about ready to make camp for the day and camping in the general vicinity of hungry polar bears, probably not the best idea. Saw some tracks today. <laughs> still beautiful out wind hasn't picked up i'm sweating i'm exhausted i think i've done about 12k and i'm going to try to push on are they moving oh i don't think so i'm gonna look again i don't think so well time to get going hopefully don't get eaten by bears Buck's eating some snow, he's thirsty. Buck prefers eating snow to drinking water, believe it or not. Hey Buck, you a good sled dog? You're a pretty good sled dog, aren't you Buck? Aren't ya? Did you see, you see polar bear? See any polar bears? No? What are you doing, huh? Made it a solid uh, 15 and a half kilometers today. So further than I needed to go. And I could have pushed on a little bit more, but you know what, I was starting to get a little hungry, a little thirsty and uh, you know, what's the point really? You know, so I decided to pull over and make camp while I still have uh, a bit of the, the warmth from the sun. Cause as soon as that sun drops down below the mountains, it gets pretty chilly bum bum. As soon as I get to camp, I put on my parka and as I work, usually uh, I, I stay warm before I climb into my tent. So I'm just gonna have a sip of tea and enjoy the view. Wow, beautiful out right now. Hi, Mom. Sometimes the more nervous you are before a trip like this, the more rewarding it is to finish. And let me tell you, coming out here by yourself into prime polar bear territory in the Arctic, blizzard season, etc., etc. It takes a lot of guts, you know, and it's hard. It's very physically demanding. So many little things you have to remember, especially when you're shooting it and charging batteries, etc., etc. But uh, I mean, the more challenging a trip is, and the more scared you are to head out there on a trip, the more rewarding it is when you complete it. And I think that goes for a lot of things in life too, you know. Um, do what you're scared to do. What you least want to do sometimes will f is what you should do first, they say, and will make you feel the best uh, when you finish it. So I guess doing what you're scared to do is what will ultimately be the most rewarding and the most fulfilling. This is what I thought might have been a polar bear yesterday. Uh, looks like it was once a good machine, but I needed some repairs and I just found it here stranded in the middle of North Peng near Tung Fjord. Whoever was riding this machine, I hope that they had some buddies with them to get a ride home because it's a long walk. Believe me, I know. Well, time to keep pushing on. Starting to freeze my butt off as soon as I stop here, but I'm traveling so light. 
shouldn't be a surprise. One things that's crucial to bring when you're out here is a vacuum bottle. Keep some tea, hot chocolate, coffee, whatever, nice and warm, nice and hot all freaking day. And it's just a dream to sit down and, and have a sip of something warm, but it's also a serious survival thing because if you start to get too cold and hypothermic, this here can save your life. I brought a really beefy one on this trip it holds a lot and also of course helps keep me hydrated too It's always a sad moment of the day when you're getting on in the afternoon and you think you've made it far and you take a look at the map and the GPS and realize you have another five or six K to go. I always make it, but you know, by that time you're already exhausted and you realize you have to be pretty much beat to make it the distance you need to make it every day. Thinking about my wife right now, Tori, and she's pregnant with our first child. It's a, a boy, I'm gonna have a son. And you know, it's hard to be away from her. So I think about her a lot and you know, what she's going through with being pregnant is not easy. And I really wish I was there for her to be supportive. But uh, the reason I can get out and do these sort of things is because I've found a way to do it as my livelihood. And uh, you know, there's just some sort of amazing connection that I have with the land and for, coming to places like this and also sharing it with people. I found a way to do that through filmmaking and writing and photography. <laughs> and in some ways it does make it more like a job. You know, there's more stresses when you're out here to capture certain footage and certain shots. But uh, at the end of the day, the reason I do it is just for absolute love of wild places, love of the land, love of nature, the dramatic scenery we have in places in ca like this in Canada. I mean, just look around here. This is just unreal. And I'm happy that I get a chance to share it with people to, you know, inspire them <clears throat> to maybe come out and do trips like this, um, or maybe just inspire them to get up and clean the garage at the very least, you know? And uh, I think that by sharing the history of the land and the story of the land and the animals and nature, uh, the culture, um, will really help open people's eyes to realize that there is something very special about places when they're wild and that keeping them wild and keeping that aspect of adventure uh, available to everyone through wilderness, I think is um, it's just so amazing, you know. Hot beverages are also something that you definitely want to keep at the ready. So I'll show you what I do with mine. I actually have a little loop here, just rope that I've uh, zip tied to one of my straps. That way. You can just clip the bottle down and I don't lose it, but it's right there on top of everything in case I start to freeze and, or if I want to take a break and have a nice hot drink. Same reason I always keep my big down parka available like that so I can break it out, put it on if I get cold. You're doing a really good job today, buddy. Buck's pulling a good chunk of weight here. All our food and fuel.
Well, it is the end of the day, day five. I made it over 15 kilometers today. Little wind and relatively warm weather lets me just dress really lightly and move quickly without having to worry about sweating a whole ton and without getting too cold because you know when you don't wear a lot you get cold if there's wind and it really becomes a balancing act between sweating and too hot and too cold and you just can't make it as far but today I was really able to boot it um, and uh, wow what a beautiful spot to say the least the scenery is just getting nicer and nicer I did notice here though that the snow is quite a bit shallower um, so that's gonna make it more challenging to get uh, snow to melt for drinking water and also to anchor my tent so what I'm looking for is basically a drift that I can kind of set up on top of where the snows hard packed and there's enough that will let me anchor my tent with my snow stakes so I've kind of chosen right here you can see the drift and that whole area kind of right there is drifted so I'm going to set my tent up on top of that and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll snow stake it but if it turns out not to be enough I'll have to break out the uh, I'll have to break out the, the ice screws because one of the things you want to make sure you do out here is always set up your tent really sturdily sturdily is that a word really securely because you never know when a blizzard might come ripping in it can be beautiful like this one minute and a blizzard the next um, so something you definitely want to be be on the lookout for oh it's been so nice being able to set this tent up without howling gale force wind impeding my ability to do so Will there be enough snow here for me to anchor this tent? Oh, there it is. And it's now normally this might not be enough, but it's hard packed. the line's gonna go. I'm gonna sink this sideways down as far as I can. And knock it in and dig that line in. Tighten this here. Oh, pretty hard packed here. So I think it's gonna be okay. I don't, don't need to bust out the ice screws. Same thing on all the other sides. Buck, are you gonna help? I guess not. Oh well. Not enough snow here, so we're gonna have to improvise for this one. Especially after you give it a couple minutes, as soon as you dig down, you expose some of the moisture that's being kept insulated under the snow, and that freezes up and then it really locks that uh, that snow stake in place. So I think that's what's gonna happen here, luckily.
bear fence up today. Go on. Go on. Got to put Buck in the tent while I arm the bear fence. A physically demanding day feels really good to finish it um, with uh, you know perfect conditions in this gorgeous evening like we have right now. It's just too damn windy to go on today. <laughs> <laughs>